Many had thought the great crash in 1929 had been a good thing because there were too many people like Bill W. showing up at their exclusive members-only gentlemen's clubs, and these newly rich didn't have the proper manners to go along with having so much money. And old money thought that poor people had no business getting ahead in the world where it was becoming increasingly difficult to find good servants since the Great War had destroyed the serving class. America had gotten into the Great War when Germany was winning, or Britain would not have had to pay back the lend owed the U.S., and the Owen Plan of 1929 had been a $9 billion debt that would not be paid off until 1988. President Wilson had written his 14 points as though Germany deserved to be treated as a victor. However, the British screwed with the implementation of the 14 points in order to punish Germany, and Wilson suffered a stroke in October of 1919 that rendered him paralyzed on his left side, and the stroke came three months after Germany had signed the Treaty of Versailles on the 28th of June, five years to the day after Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. President Wilson's wife became the de facto first woman president of the United States until the Republican candidate beat them out of a third term in the next election in November of 1920 and the League of Nations came out of the peace negotiations born from Wilson's vision after the Great War of an international group that could mediate disputes without having to resort to armed force. Copies of the 14 points had been dropped behind enemy lines to the German troops and delivered directly to the German leaders in person, and when the lost battalion held and the Americans broke through the German lines, the British agreed to the armistice signed five weeks after the lost battalion was relieved. Germany responded favorably to Wilson's request for the armistice because the 14 points were fair and just and treated Germany with respect, and the American proposal had been delivered to the Kaiser right after the British had gotten the Americans to abandon their Metz offensive into the Argonne Forest so the British could manage their Cambrai advance. And when the Americans took incredible losses in the Battle of Cambrai, General Pershing had reported to President Wilson that fighting alongside the British was no longer acceptable. Two million Americans came over to France and built roads and docks and warehouses and hospitals and 1,000 miles of railroad tracks and thousands of miles of telegraph and telephone lines, and it was during the last month of the Great War that the corporal from Tennessee, Mr. Alvin York, did his famous turkey shoot while the turning point in the war had been when the Americans at Belle Wood held off the Germans marching on Paris. They'd been training for a new kind of fighting, to attack and keep on attacking and take machine-gun nests in spite of losses, and now they were doing it. In the first days of that battle, the Germans sent in seven divisions to stop the first division of the Americans, and when they failed, their leaders knew that the tide of the war had turned. World's End, page 249 and 50. Kurt wasn't afraid that his friend might get physically hurt, for it was obvious that the British would be driven into the sea and the French would lose Paris long before the Americans could take any effective part in this war. But Kurt didn't want his friend's mind distorted and warped by the agents of British imperialism. These people, who had grabbed most of the desirable parts of the earth, now thought they had a chance to destroy the German fleet, build their Cape to Cairo Railroad, keep the Germans from building the Berlin to Baghdad Railroad, and in every way thwart the efforts of a vigorous and capable race to find their place in the sun. World's End, page 247. The month after the Americans landed on the beaches of Normandy in 1944, the meeting at Bretton Woods in July created an international monetary fund and an international bank so that London would no longer be the banking capital of the world. And the next month they would meet at Dumbarton Oaks to talk about creating the United Nations. The Fourteen Points had called for freedom of the seas and an end to secret treaties. And the League of Nations first met in Paris in January of 1920 and then moved to Geneva into a hotel named the National Hotel, but they renamed it the Palace Wilson in President Wilson's honor. 